Welcome to the ATB Project. You're with your host, Stephen Jeff. G'day, mate. G'day, mate. Papers, no, please. Pa- papers, please. Papers, please. <laughs> it's, it's I mean, this is a famous saying that it we're is. bringing back. We're bringing it back, Steve. Bringing it back. So, papers, but in all seriousness, studies. Yep. Uh, double blind, mm. placebo, mm. cohort. Mm. Give me some other words. Too. Case series, yeah. case report, expert opinion, in vitro, in vivo, um, um, interventionists, yeah. um, observational. There's all these types of studies that that you, you can read, and also non studies like expert opinions yeah. and uh, and fake news. You fake know, news. It, 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 fake it, it, news. It, you know, there, there, there's levels of evidence that we need to discuss, and it's not just papers and studies that, that mean that's the end of it. Because otherwise, if, if a published study was enough, you'd just have to test a bunch of rats on a drug and that'd be it. So we've got to look at different levels. Yeah. And, and what I'm going to say at the start is there's no bad levels. They've right. all got their use. Yeah, like propaganda. Like propaganda <laughs> or like yeah. speculation yeah. or like opinion. That, that's all okay, yeah. but we've got to be able to support that opinion with something else. Okay. Cool. So, so you know, there's different hierarchical levels in evidence, and it depends on what you look at and, and who writes it of, of where you are in, in the level of the food chain. There's good studies that show that uh, a classic one is exercise being good for you. Mm-hmm. There's the top A1 level of evidence or meta-analysis mm-hmm. that shows that that's beneficial for the human body. Mm-hmm. And then there's emerging evidence now, which is, might be a new drug or a new thing or something, and that's just coming out now where they've just done a, like um, penicillin, bacteria, in a petri dish and they've seen they've, they've just tested whether the penicillin kills the bacteria and that's an in vitro test yeah and look for many many reasons yep. say for an example yep. investors that might hear that who are looking at a new biotech or something Correct. like that they might go that's worth my you know three cents if yep. that makes sense right yep. and then hope the and they might make you know 20 30 of these things with the excitement that maybe one out of those 20 Make them millions and millions of dollars, right? Correct. So, I mean, again, as you're saying, depending on what it is that you're looking at, mm. um, the different the different studies, mm. um, the, the different scientific papers, research, mm. information, mm-hmm. is all valuable. Of course it in is. In a court of law. Yeah. Uh, expert opinions heavily relied upon. Yeah, right? exactly. Because they've been, they've been proven and they've been, they've been backed up by science yep. and, and they're s- consistently right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe you know, not. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as opposed to consistently wrong. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you've you've got um, so yeah. So all right, Steve. They're, so they're, so they're break abs- it down for me. They're, they're all good, and 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 so so just going through the let, let's take medicines for example. Let's say I wanted this new drug, yeah. and this drug's going to um, kill um, viruses. Okay. okay. Yeah. So so we take a virus, yeah. and we grow it. Okay. And then we expose it to the drug and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And it kills. Let's say it kills it. Yeah. You go. Okay. Well, that's great. The drug kills the virus. Yeah. And you go. Okay, but the drug could be cyanide, right. which kills viruses and everything. Yeah. So what we do in the next level is we get a bunch of animals, mm-hmm. usually rats, mm-hmm. and um, we, we infect them with the virus mm-hmm. and we give them the drug. Most drugs, not all, there are some famous drugs that haven't been to skipped animal trials mm-hmm. um, um, for, for multiple reasons, like penicillin, skipped animal trials. Yep. Um, and it was just in a petri dish and you know it, it, there wasn't many double blind randomized trials on it because it was obviously killing bacteria mm. like the first guy who took penicillin was was dying of a bacterial infection right they gave him penicillin and he got better and basically re- recovered well Except that's that, a kind of a nothing to lose sort of a exactly theory craft right and i yep. mean wh- that wasn't during a time of war was it when no, was when 28 to it? 1928 yeah. was it 1928. So, so, and then the guy, they ran out of penicillin because it was difficult to make then, no. and then he died. <laughs> so, oh. so, sorry. But, but the, the end of the story was that he got better. Yeah. And then, because you need to take it for a course, they didn't know this, of course, back then. The other big one that I am really concerned about as well, too, and this is where sometimes science can go off on its own mm-hmm. runaway freight train, is correlation and causation. Yes. And, and that is a really, really sticky wicket yep, for our English friends out there. Americans are going, what's a sticky wicket? What's a sticky wicket? Um, yeah, basically not good. Um, okay. This is where you can draw the wrong conclusion based on data that looks correct. And mm-hmm. this is where manipulation, mm-hmm. emissions... Um, dodgy science and all this mm-hmm. sort of stuff can also come into, con- which concerns, right? Yes. And, and this is again, keep in the back of your mind who mm-hmm. who has the gold makes the rules. Yes. So if this is where we need to have debate, mm-hmm. this is where we need need to get two people of of opposing opinions to be able to put forth information. Yeah. Um, you know because 
you don't want it to be you don't want to be railroaded. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be oh you look, you know, um drinking kerosene is the best thing ever and every yeah. all the kerosene makers are going absolutely yes. and they you know railroad right. people and make and select the evidence that makes it look like that's the best. There there is bias and there's correlation causation. So we'll talk about both those oh, things. Yeah. Cool. Let's say I let's say like well I'll take myself for example. I was born in nineteen sixty nine, right? I was born in the summer of 69. We believe that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. Okay. And in 1969, Rolling Stones hit it big and they've been huge ever since. Yeah. Is that because of me? Yes. No, no. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Well, uh, what was it someone else said is that... Um, it's correlation. Something like 80% of people globally die within six months of eating a potato. Yes. <laughs> so yes. it's like, you know, I mean, you can make whatever statistic fit that you want to. Correlation and causation is two different or things. 24 Ste- hours. Step it through for me then in terms of... Um, like you've got meta-analysis. Mm-hmm. Um, what's SR stand for? I'm reading it. Oh, systemic here. review. Right. Um, Randomised controlled trial. Right. Is this in, 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 in from, from best to, to... To worst at the well, bottom. Well, you can't not say worse, worse no. but, but probably, how would you say, the most... Um, the least weighted evidence is the okay. way they do it. The, the level of evidence or the weighted evidence. So, Cohort so, studies yep. and then case control yep. studies, case series, case reports, yep. expert opinion, yep. animal research in, in, in vitro. vitro. So we've started, we started. talked about in vitro in a petri dish. We've got our antiviral drug. It kills the virus. Mm-hmm. We give the virus to the animals. Yep. We well, give that's them the in drug. vivo now yep. because once it goes into an animal, correct? In vivo, vivo. absolutely. Yeah. So that's the difference if you're thinking in vitro, vivo. Yeah. Yep. So we give the drug to the rats and if all the rats die, including the ones we gave the drug, uh, we know that... that it was that, successful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, no, no, depending on obviously so, what you're trying to do. Yeah. Exactly. So we have to do a bit of a um, safety trial. Right. So look, all right, the rats didn't have any adverse effects whatsoever. We test their blood. We, when, when rats have gone through research, they're killed afterwards and yep. they're usually, you know, autopsy yep. to see, you know, what went on with their organs. They, they measure the livers and all sorts of things. And they found out the drug didn't harm the rats, let's just say. Mm. That they could see. Yep. And they went, okay, so the drug is okay for... Um, you know, rats, and it was, you know, 100 rats or whatever. And so then we, we have an opinion. We say this drug could cure this virus mm-hmm. or help this virus. So then we, we, we go into what we call a pilot trial. So we get a small amount of people because uh-huh. we can monitor the smaller people very closely. Yep. We can draw their blood every day and make sure they're healthy and watch for symptoms. We dose it out to what we think maybe different levels of dosages and we give them, it's only a small trial, it's only 10, 20, 30 people. Mm-hmm. It's called a pilot trial. Mm-hmm. And from that, we, we establish safety, uh-huh. okay? So you can just give them the drug and then the next trial, you can give them the drug and the virus, but mm. usually it's just the drug to see for safety. Yeah. Um, and then you work out the dosage of the drug by another trial, mm-hmm. which says, okay, it was, we gave them a very small amount. We, we found the safe amount in this group, and then we gave it to this group, and it, let's say it helped the virus mm. in a pilot trial. Mm-hmm. That's still good, yeah. because then we go to an ethics board. Now, an ethics board is at a university with a bunch of you know, health scientists are sitting around going, mm-hmm. okay, what do you want to do? You want to give this, this drug to 100 people, 200 people? Mm-hmm. What's your evidence? You say, well, in vitro, we've, we've, we can kill the virus. Yep. In vivo, in rats, mm-hmm. it, it killed the virus and didn't kill the rats. Mm-hmm. We gave it to a small amount of people and there was no adverse effects. Yep. Then we gave it to a small amount of people with the virus and it seemed to help it. Okay. And so the, the ethics board, let's say, go, okay, you can do a randomised, double-blind, placebo crossover trial yeah. Oh, yeah a lot of words there yeah yeah so 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 what we do is uh, so, so nobody knows what they're getting no the people giving the medication don't know what they're double giving blinded. and the recipient doesn't know what they're getting correct and that that's double blinded like i here i am i'm the physician running a trial and i say here brooklyn here's here's a tablet and um let's see what happens to you and let's say this virus is you know well maybe not, it's for an std or something like that Oh, okay. Okay. It's <laughs> an STD then. Yeah, well, I mean, look, it's just completely randomised. Randomised, right? yeah. So yeah. we've Second got... Last podcast, so, you know. Yep, yep. We've, we've, we've got the herpes virus, so we're testing it now. Yep. Because the herpes virus won't kill you. No. So so we round up people with the herpes virus. Yep. Type 2, because yep. it's a sexually transmitted disease, as you correct. Yeah, it's not the type 1, which not is... Not the cold sores. The sores around your mouth. So, so we round up a bunch of people with this, with this virus, and, yep. and, and, and we give them a double-blind placebo control. So we, we divide the group up. We randomise them yep. to severity mm-hmm. and age and sex. So we've got about the same yep. cohort in each group. Randomised doesn't mean random. It's the opposite to random. You actually make sure you've got 
So you have the same age group and same amount of women and men in each group. Mm-hmm. So you randomise it yourself. Mm-hmm. You, so, so you give these guys the drug, these guys the placebo, and then you test their, their viral load. And at the end of the trial, we, we draw all their bloods. We do another safety uh, test to make sure there's no liver problems or kidneys or anything like that, full blood counts. And we measure their viral load and we watch for the placebo group. And then during the trial, we cross it over. So if you do a crossover trial, okay. you then... You, you measure them going through the trial. They don't know how they're going. These guys, after a month, don't have any virus left, let's say. They're the active one. The, yep. the placebo has still got loads of virus. So we cross them over halfway through the trial without telling them and without telling the doctors. And all of a sudden, uh, these guys lose their viral load too. And that's really good evidence. Because, yes, it could have been a fluke that this group just happened to miraculously cure. But if you cross them over, then you can see. And then this guy's, these guys cleared up. It's very, very good ev- evidence. And that's a randomised, controlled, because we randomised people, we controlled for the variables, and we double-blinded it. The physician was blinded, the, the yep. people were blinded. Yep. Placebo controlled, yep. so we had a placebo, and it was crossover trial, and that's called a double-eyed, blind, randomised, placebo crossover trial. Cool. So, Steve, uh, talk to me then about things like thalidomide. Thalidomide. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously yeah. this is not foolproof. No, um, it's not. And, 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 and there's lots of medications that are being put onto the market. Oh, yeah. But then after they've actually been put out into the larger population, they've gone, hang on a minute. Yes. We got this wrong. Yes. And this is where bias might play a role. Right. Because guess who's funding all these trials up till this point? The people are going to make a lot of the money. Correct. Which, you know, again, from a capitalistic point of view... Yeah. That makes sense. So, so I mean, of course the drug company would have to fund that trial up to this point. They mm. just have to. Yep. So that's the first level of evidence, and you, and you do that sort of thing. But let's talk about thalidomide. Thalidomide is an anti-nausea drug. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. So we they gave gone, it to pregnant women. They right? gave it to pregnant so women. So that they wouldn't get morning sickness, effectively. Correct. And it worked very well. Mm-hmm. Let's just... It's stopping and suppressing the sickness. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Right. Right. Now, for some unknown mechanism, um, and and it didn't, it wasn't borne out in the trials. And a lot of side effects aren't borne out in the trials. So the trial might have been on a hundred pregnant women. Well, well, the question I've got to say to you, Steve, as well, too, right? For, for thalidomide, for example, mm. like baby gestation time, you know, yeah. sort of nine odd months. Yeah. Okay, so you get morning sickness, first trimester, second, mm. whenever you mm. might get it. So they go, okay, great. They give it to people. Morning sickness stops. They go, mm. gee, yeah. great. Absolutely. Mother's fine, yep. no problem. Yep. On you go. Absolutely. Nine months later, yeah. baby comes out with no arms, no legs. Correct. Right. And, so, and that's what happened. And, and, and this is the problem. At what point did they go, well, okay, the mum's not dropping dead. Mm-hmm. She's not, there's no negative side effects for the mum that we can see. No. Nah. At what point did they stop and think, well, okay, can we just determine how it's affecting the unborn baby? No, they couldn't because uh, ultrasounds were, were very rare back then and really not, there were no MRIs. This is what so, so, and, and, science and never sleeps. It, it doesn't. And so, you know, even going through all these randomised things, you've still got to do follow-up trials mm-hmm. and they're called observational trials. Mm-hmm. So, so there was like a post-market review, is it? Correct. Yeah. And so with thalidomide, that's what came out. They said, okay, let's see what happens to the babies when they're born with this thing. And they, they found that there were babies that were born alarmingly without limbs. Then, you know, like in the 50s, they, they were probably testing this drug. Right. Uh, ultrasounds were not around and it's like, right. you know, and, and a woman's going, oh my God, my nausea, or nausea, try this. Oh, I feel better. And it's sort of like, oh, I can eat now. Oh, because well, it well, really look, helped. No, nothing's changed today. <clears throat> no. Doctors are the most educated people that yes, we know, yes, right? Yes. I mean, typically, if you're going to say who are the smartest people around, mm. people would go lawyers, mm. you know, doctors, mm. you know, politicians. <laughs> Sorry. I had to throw the word. Yeah, that, was my, oh. that was my double blind placebo yeah, control yeah, trial, Steve, yeah, just yeah. to see if you were paying attention. Yeah, I'm paying attention. Yeah, no, 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 no. But, uh, but I'm serious though, in terms of you know, pilots, mm. astronauts, mm-hmm. you know, physicians, yep. doctors, yep. You know, those are your smart people. They are. They are trusted because they, they are concerned with your well, health and wellness. So yep. you, if they say, hey, you can take this, mm. I'm taking it. Of right? course. And, and, and I'm not saying that the doctors were doing anything wrong because they were genuinely concerned about the comfort and well-being of their patients yep. and they were recommending it. Yep, of course. And it made them feel... So, so it also... You've got to remember, like, like forget the follow-up because there wasn't enough follow-up in the trials, obviously. But um, what the, the idea is, is you've got this amazing drug that's helping all these women who are stopping them feeling sick, mm. which is... The worst thing that can happen to a first trimester woman. Well, not uh, the worst thing. Yeah, that's I know, really bad, right? At the time. So yeah. we, we let, let's not let's not read in the future. Back in 1958, let's just say that, and, and so it really helped them. And so they go, well, well, yeah, what? Well, let's give it now. Now, of course, not every child was born with missing limbs. No, I know. It just 
you know, and, and this is pre-internet. Yep. So if a couple of hospitals around the country... It doesn't matter country, anymore, Steve. You've got the internet. You still can't find the truth out there. <laughs> it's true. So, to, so but, you know, I can yeah. okay. so, so, so it was like these isolated cases of, of limbs missing, and it's sort of like, oh, okay, wow. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, there were conferences, you know, where people got together and they sort of talked to each other, and all of a sudden there was a bit of a pattern forming. So how many years was it in the market, actually? It would be interesting to know. Oh, so yeah. So it took 50 years for an apology. Yeah. So obviously yeah. they found out the truth, they looked at that, and they went, yeah. hang on a minute. Oops. Yeah. What's the correlation with these babies that are missing limbs now? I don't know what the percentage would be, but even if it was 5%, all well, of a sudden babies missing limbs, yeah. okay, what have these 5% of women got? We're yep. all taking thalidomide. Yep. Right, stop. Let's have a look here. And there would have been, even if it was 5%, let, let's say there were 50% of the market that were taking thalidomide because it was a very popular drug. That means only 1 in 10 got that side effect. Well, it, it might not have been, Steve. I mean, the percentage yeah. might have been 1%. Yes. But at the end of the day, would you take a drug if you knew that the chances of severe harm, mm. illness, or death mm. was 1%, nah, it's, would it's, you jump on a plane and, and fly to New Zealand? Not that you can go there anyway. Yeah. Um, if the, there was a 1% chance that you would, the wings would fall off and you would die? <laughs> Probably not. No. The, the only time I do that, and this is where drug trials get, get skewed, is that drugs are, there are some drugs that are extraordinarily dangerous right out there. Like they, they have like a 10% fatality rate, mm. but they're for treating cancers with a 90% fatality rate, for example. Well, that, that's the same as saying, well, okay, if you stay here in Australia, there's a 10% chance of you dying, but there's a 1% chance. Yeah, okay, I'll take those odds. So, so, so you've got to remember what this drug, like we go back to our, our herpes drug, that's not going to kill anyone. So it has to be extraordinarily safe. Mm. If there's a drug that's, look, at last stage melanoma, for example, there's a drug recently approved. It's got horrendous side effects, like, like cisplastin, like, like uh, any of the um, anti-cancer drugs. They've got horrendous side effects. Hair drops out, guts, you know, all sorts of makes you feel horrible, but there is a chance it will cure your cancer. Right, right. So then all of a sudden those side effects are like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, that, that's worth the risk. So, so side effects are all relative to the drug that it's going to be treated. So if you get a lot of side effects to our herpes, you're in trouble. But if you get a lot of side effects to someone who's dying of cancer, then, it, then it's not a problem. So let's go through that study. We've done our randomised mm -hmm. and I'm Mr. Drug Company. Uh, and then, you know, what, what we hope then is those studies are replicated by universities independently of of the, of the drug company's funding. Well, how do you get, yeah, and this is the thing, this is the independent mm. part, this is yeah. the the, the non-bias, this yeah. is the, uh, e again, he who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. How, do you stop, how do you stop that from happening? Well, you can't. You, you literally can't. You just have to disclose it. And it's like anything. It's like in business. For example, let's say I'm running a business and I have a brother who's uh, a mechanic who wants to service my company fleet. Then if I'm at the board, I say, okay, I'm going to disclose a, a potential conflict of interest uh -huh. or perception of bias. Uh -huh. There's two levels there. Yep. And I'm going to say, listen, my brother services things, so, but, but he's the cheapest. Anyway, I'll leave the room and I'll get you guys to decide. That, that, that's what happens under the Corporations Act. So you have to have that level of distance from the, the intervention. And that's what you should do as a drug company. You should provide the drug to a university for testing mm. and that's it. You, you put your hands up and go, that's all. And, and that's where you, and like in America, it's worse because a lot of the drug companies literally fund, you know, senators, you know, they, they, they provide financial support for them because they're a company, they're allowed to donate that. So there is that, well, I'll just call it a perception of bias that, for example, let's say I'm a senator and, you know, drug company A gives me money for my campaign, which mm. is completely legal. Yeah. And their drug company A is under some sort of scrutiny. Yeah. And I'm a senator. I'm going to say, look, we don't need to investigate these guys. That's a real problem. Right. And that, that could potentially happen. Uh -huh. Because, you know, if you investigate these guys, I lose my funding and I lose my seat in the Senate. And that, that's what happens. So, so it's not perfect. None, none of this is perfect. There's no goal it's just about levels and, and i think the truth comes out in the end and i does. think observing as well too and, and, yep. and this is why you know i'd rather be the uh, the second mouse yeah. uh you know getting the cheese here just yep. to see what's especially with anything that's potentially um new yep. i mean like you've got your early adopters that love to be oh, i'm the first one that got here yep. you know buying a tv great mm -hmm. tv's probably not going to hurt you mm -hmm. but you know, some of these other things. I'll just stand back and observe for a yeah. while. Um, all right, Steve, expert. Do you want to go? Through? Well, let's go through then the, right. the, the, the other things then. So, so the randomised controlled trial is, is, is of course, the, uh, quite high up on the food chain. They're the one we, we described there. But what's beyond that is is when they do systemic reviews. Okay. So, so for example, let's say that there's been, you know, drug company trial, there's been, the university's done a trial, and these and they've all done it, they've all done these trials at different levels, uh, in vitro, in vivo, all that, a 
systemic review is some expert in the area that goes, right, I'm going to write a paper on all those studies and incorporate them and come up with a conclusion of my own. Yeah. And that's called a systemic review. Now, is that, is that the Lancet? Is that, is that what they, they do? They can be published in any papers. There, there's not many papers that are dedicated to reviews. There okay. are, yeah. uh, like um, Cochrane, Cochrane database. Yeah, and you mentioned Cochrane a lot. You yeah. like Cochrane, right? Well, I, I, I like it because it's actually the one beyond systemic reviews. It's right. meta-analysis. Right, right, right. We'll um, get to meta-analysis. Yeah. In so, but systemic reviews, are, 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 I like them because they, like, let's say I'm researching, you know, drug A into to herpes. I would look at systemic reviews first mm-hmm. because they take into account all the in vitro, in vivo studies, and it just comes out with this this piece of evidence and more like a dialogue Mm -hmm. on this drug and it says look studies have found the drug you know cures herpes it doesn't harm animals and there's no adverse liver effects and it's 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 down the track a bit after this drug's been out for a long period of time so it's a good one to start with when you're doing research at home and that sort of thing looking up review papers Mm -hmm. and when you're doing on pubmed you can just click review and, and you start with that so it just looks at the reviews so that's a good way to start to you know, looking from systemic reviews meta-analysis are beyond that they're a little mm. bit higher up mm. but they're not the best place to start because they're more black and white mm. and they look at all the just the randomized controlled trials and they say right let's put all those results together and come up with one conclusion okay and that's the strongest piece of evidence because it's it's not there's no opinions any of those steve very, very strong. Yeah. Any of those failed? Any of those systemic reviews or meta-analysis? Well, let's oh, get into yeah. meta-analysis. Get- so systemic re- review yeah. is good. What's yeah. meta-analysis then? Meta-analysis is is just the maths of the whole thing. So let's say, you've, you know, those randomised controlled trials that we talked about before? Yeah. Let's say there's been 10 of them released right. on the particular drug you're in question. Uh-huh. Then you look at those and it comes up with, look, the, the classic ones are stay statin drugs, okay, that reduce cholesterol. There's been a number of meta-analysis done on those drugs which show that it drops cholesterol. And there's really no question about that, that statin drugs reduce cholesterol in the blood. Yeah. But that's one aspect. Mm-hmm. And the, the problem with that is, what does that mean? Right. Now, you have to go... The, the bottom line is that's not what you're trying to do to that person who's dropped their cholesterol. You're trying to make them live longer, aren't you? Sure. So that's what that's the ultimate goal that's not looked at at meta analysis. Got you. you know it's, what like, I mean? it's like it's like with regards to the thalidomide, for example. Exactly. Is that yes, you want the mother to have comfort. Yep. Yep. But then if the baby, if there is a chance that yep. the baby is going to be born deformed, well, there's no short term comfort, exactly. long term misery, right? And and I would imagine there'd be meta analysis on thalidomide or such that's showing a number of research is showing it reduces nausea. Sure. And and that's great, right? <laughs> so you know, hey, hey, look, Steve. Yeah. You know this 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 makes your hair grow back. Yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, your genitals shrivel up to a size of a pea. Is that well, what happened to me, eh? Yeah, damn. Well, um, you got to so, get off that stuff, man. Yeah, I know, but I love my hair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, 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 you know, meta-analysis is great, but they only look at one aspect. Yeah, and that's not mainly not the one thing you're after. No, you know, you're after ultimately increasing your what they call a health span that's the ultimate goal of medicine is improving the health span so so you've looked at all these papers and 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 you've got all this evidence and then there's also these problems that that come later down the track where papers are retracted <laughs> that's interesting isn't it have you heard of retractions from papers well, Steve, I've got to say I don't play much in this space. I yeah. have heard of one that just really pissed me off a lot, right? Yeah. And it's actually opened my eyes to a lot of the shenanigans. Mm. The the um, we're going to get in trouble here. No. Oh, okay, good. No. But, um, so, so there's two types of two types of errors in papers. These is one of some of them are attractions, and some of them are errors where they go back and they, they, they call it the Department of Error in the Lancet, for example, where they say, oh, we, we, we said that Johnny showed this study, but it was actually Jenny. You know, that, that, that's just nah. an error. It doesn't change the result, nah. but you disclose it. Yeah. You have to disclose your, your bias, everything. And so they're very well, transparent. Maybe Johnny turned into Jenny. Absolutely. They yeah. certainly could do that. Yeah. Um, but then there's retractions, and they're the ones that, that are like, mm. That's where you've been naughty. That's well, where you've, you've come to a really bad conclusion. You have, and, and you've realised an error in your way, like you could have misquoted a paper and instead of carrying the 10 you carried carried the one instead and you just made an absolute error which has changed the outcome of the result and what's the danger of that steve especially well you yeah, go on the big danger is that let's say a paper comes out that shows that my drug a is safe and effective for the treatment of herpes mm-hmm. and um so 
everyone goes. And all the herpes yeah. rejoice. Yeah, and yeah. so you know it goes on the PBS, which yeah. means it's you know it's pretty cheap. Everyone yeah. gets it, and then it gets retracted. Right. And so the retraction was because um, oh we didn't consider this the we, we we didn't test for the we tested for the liver effects. We didn't test for the kidney effects, and now we know the kidney effects are really bad. Well, that's that's good. Because we've found out something wrong with it. Yeah, but we've given a million doses to the herpes sufferers right. and they've all got kidney failure. No, that's bad. But, but we only found that out when we gave it the, to the people out there and they got kidney failure. Right. And that happens a lot with drugs. And a lot of drugs are then taken off the market. Mm -hmm. The Lidomides Classic, there's Vioxx, there's loads of them that, that cause all sorts of, that weren't picked up in all these trials. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to remember that, let's say, I've, like Vioxx, that's a famous one, I think it was 2004, where that, that was an anti-arthritis drug. Mm. Now, if you're treating someone with arthritis and you're doing a trial, we want to see how they go in a month or two, yeah. three months, yeah. maybe six months. Yeah. But if it causes, in this case, heart disease... Well, that's right. How long does that take to come out? Steve? A few years. I mean, if you... And it did. Yeah. You so, know. so there's thousands of deaths due to Vioxx, and the Vioxx was removed from the market. How long did it take to be removed from the market? A bit too long, because there how was... Long? Oh, I can't remember, but there was lots of... It had been around uh, too long right. before it was... Um, and um, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people suffered and died because of it. Yeah. Um, so, so there's lots of those sort of drugs. And so while the papers are still legit, it, it certainly helped their arthritis. Yeah. It's but like you, the thalidomide. Focus on the wrong thing. Yeah. Okay, if you, if you measure, measure its ability to do that, great. Yep. But yep. if you take a broader look. Yeah. Okay. All right. So meta-analysis, Steve. Yeah, meta-analysis. So, so they're all the randomised controlled trials joined into one big randomised controlled trial. Yep. So, you know... So, so these are pretty accurate. Yeah, and, and they typically, are. And typically, they're, they're sort of normally, I mean, and in the, in the longer mm. that the information is going back, the yep. better, more reliable it is. Correct, to. correct. And so, you know, we use the statin one, it's a classic one. The only problem with meta-analysis is they typically only look at one outcome. Ah, okay. Which is the primary outcome of the drug. Right. So the drug might reduce CRP if it's inflammation or whatever, and, you know, or cholesterol if it's a statin. And the problem with that is that is that what you're really after in, in the big scheme of things? Like, is, is that the goal? And it's usually not. Because, you know, if you want to reduce cholesterol, that's a goal. But, you know, if you've got a printout that says my cholesterol has gone from six to five, is that good or bad? It's like I don't feel any different. Mm -hmm. Do I live longer? Do I live healthier? Mm. Studies would suggest that dyslipidemia can lead to heart disease. Mm. But now we know uh, cholesterol's got different, there's so many different forms of it. Mm. So if that was the end goal is to check cholesterol, you have to go back and say, Yes, but does it increase your lifespan? And that's when you look at the observational studies, which is another type of study where there's no intervention. Okay. So what, what they do is like a – and it's good nowadays because research has been going for, for many, many years. They say, okay, let's, let's go back and look at this. No intervention. We're just going to look at the literature and we're going to look at all the people that um, took this statin drug and see if they live longer. Yeah. That's one outcome. And so, you know – you look at you take all the people that took the statin, all the people that didn't. You look at them and you, you you contact them all and you get them all and you put them all in this data and you find out that let's say yep yeah, they did live longer, then that's good, and that's an observational study. Not only do they live longer, but do they live longer with the quality of life, Steve? That's right, because I mean they might all live longer, but being zombies, you yeah. Know, Actually, the, the, the statin study I'm thinking of in the in the observational study they didn't live longer. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's the fact. So so again, so, so the Cochrane. And, and some of the papers, the yeah. Cochrane reviews are, are pretty good. The gold standard. They are. Uh, Lan Lancet as well too. Lancet's a good, they're, they're, that's a peer-reviewed paper. Right. And, and, and peer-reviewed papers is the next level, uh, is another level layer of safety you have. Yeah. So let's say I'm a, a drug company, yeah. okay, and I'm going to bring out my drug that for herpes. And I want to say, look, I, I've got a good paper here. I think, you know, I've done a study on it. Here, Lancet, can you please publish that for me? And mm. they go... Well, we'll see. And so they get a whole lot of experts together and they call them in, virologists and epidemiologists, and they, they go through all my data and look at this and mm. they ask me questions about it, blah, blah, blah. And they say, yep, that's a legitimate study. We're going to publish it in The Lancet. Mm. And that's where you get that level of, you know, what they call peer review. Mm. Peers have reviewed the study and it seems legit. Okay. And uh, so well, that's That Lancet. sounds pretty... But there have been some retractions lately from, from, from The Lancet, well, which, is, which was. was surprising. Because, I mean, it, as far as I was concerned, they were considered to be... Up there, Cochrane review. I mean, like really, really high, high level of, of um, uh, yeah. Uh, how would you say? 
Well, they 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 efficacy. They, yeah, they they they're quite. They're, they're, there's I mean, there's papers that you well, prestige is what they yeah. typically use, and and the Lancet's got a pretty good prestige, but they did retract one last year. But yeah, this is this is the problem with with the media, and this is where you know you, like like you know let, let's say you and I who know about this retraction, and you you're arguing with someone who watched the news last year and said, hey, that drug, mm. well, I saw it on the news, it killed, you know, it's really dangerous, mm. and something you go, no, no, that paper was retracted. They go, what does that mean? And it's like, well, it means that those results were false. Well, and this is the interesting thing, and we talk about this a lot as well too, um, mm. is that people's attention pan, span, the average person, that they're not, they're not no. scientists, Steve. They're not no. going to delve into the information. Mm. They will listen to the experts. If, mm. if, they, if they, And look, this is why people listen to you, Steve, and, 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 and our team, is because you guys are experts in your field, right? Mm. We come from a slightly different holistic, um, mm. you know, you're chemist by background, but you're also in natural, natural medicine as well too. Mm. Like you, you just look at, you know, yeah. and, so, and so a lot of people who love that listen listen to us yeah. and they shouldn't take everything that we say as gospel they no. can definitely dive into it and this is one of the things again voltaire yes. you know is that uh, you know I, I might completely disagree with what you have to say but i will i will defend your right to say the other one that i really like as well too is that um uh, uh people defend um and i forget exactly what it is i'll find the quote but people yeah. defend uh, love the bonds that they uh, chain themselves with. Effectively, if they've oh, created yeah. opinion, they love it so yeah. much that they refuse n- to listen to evidence to, yeah. to, to suggest they w- they won't allow you to be to free them because they've created such a strong, it's terrible, of trampled yeah. all over his saying. But it's a really good one. Um, but it's the same thing here as well too. Is that um, people rely on experts now mm-hmm. if they believe that um, the media is giving them all of the information that they're getting it from. Mm-hmm. This is bad. Yeah. That's it. That's the end of it for them. They don't want to hear anything else. Yeah. Not that they don't want to hear. It, but they don't have time, busy lives, and yep. getting on with things, right? Yep. So when this sort of stuff happens, it's, oh, yeah. it's concerning, right? It's it's flawed. Um, there's no no so buts about it. All, all they're trying to do is remove as much of the, the 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 flaws as you can. You know, like we talk about the bias. The drug company has got to be the first person to bring out the new drug mm. because who else is going to fund it? Exactly. Taxpayers. Yeah. You can't ask taxpayers say, hey, hey give me a few million bucks because I've got this idea yeah. that I want to spend your money on because it could be a failure. Mm. Uh, it, it's got to be done by the drug company that's right. to start with, um, and, and then and then and then of course that, that's the interventional trials. The observational trials are, are just as interesting because they're the ones that you look at and say mm, those people who typically eat um, more broccoli get less disease or whatever it is, you know, whatever it is. And that's an observational study which is still powerful. But what you then do is you can move that into a interventional study and say, all right, we're going to give these group a bunch of broccoli and see what happens to their disease process. So you reverse the process, reverse engineer it. Well, it's really interesting if you look at, and again, this is natural medicine as well too, mm. because you can't patent nature, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it was um, uh, uh, Claris uh, Thompson, uh, Clarence. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. He actually said, absolutely, and I think this is going back a few years ago, you yeah. cannot, because a lot of companies were looking to sort of get DNA and other things like that, right? And he said, yeah. you just can't do no. it. So it's illegal to do it. Um, but that, that is typically true. But the amount of research and papers and information mm. on all sorts of things in nature, Steve, where mm. we've isolated certain mm. isoflavones or, yep. or, 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 or ingredients, whatever it may be, which are, which are unbelievably good. But yet you can't make the sort of claims typically on that that you can on a drug no. because you don't own it. And I mean, yeah. again, I think this is where a lot of the information now with, with a lot of money is being spent on creating these owning that because I mean yeah. again if they spent millions and millions of dollars on re- they want to profit from it fair yeah. enough right yeah but um but a lot of the information is is how do I say this without well, myself in trouble yeah I know I know what you're trying to say yeah a lot of the information is questionable um but but here's here's the problem with as you said about natural medicine is is the fact that um let's say I you know, wanted, I was just fascinated by echinacea. I'm just going to pick a neutral herb. Yep. You know, I'm convinced it boosts your immune system. Mm-hmm. I'm super duper convinced. So I'm going to do a major randomized control because we've established safety. And I'm going to give it to 10,000 people, which is a pretty big study. There's bigger ones around, but 10,000. Who's going to fund that? Yeah, well, you have to. Yeah. And then who benefits? Yeah. And Anybody who wants to put echinacea yeah. in their product. They go, oh, great, echinacea is good for your immune system. That's terrific. Oh, I might use some of that. I might grow some. And anybody can use it. 
it. Now, if I've got my um, patented drug, drug. patented drug like Viagra, mm -hmm. um, then no one else can use Viagra. No, not and for 20 so, years, right? No, yeah. So that, that gives you an opportunity to be able to recoup your money. Correct. Fine. I, I, I get Make that. money, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's it's just... We're going down the pharmaceutical route because yeah. it's it's created to protect and, and recoup companies. Correct. I understand that, but there's nothing in the natural medicine space. No, there isn't. And, 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 that's, and that's the problem, right? Because it's natural and you can't patent it. No. Um, there, there is another type of study that is and, used. And this is where we used to, way back when, mm -hmm. uh, used a lot of proprietary blends, which we got in trouble for. Yeah. Now, a lot of companies put pixie dust ingredients mm. into their formulations and said, oh, it contains this and this, mm. and relied on the fact that people didn't know the dose amounts or, or, or what have you, and they would take mm. it. Proof's always in the pudding. If Absolutely. product works, then you're dealing with a reputable company. Absolutely. If you're taking it and it's not get it, cutting it through, mm -hmm. then you know either one or two things is happening. Either they're not dosing it effectively, they're using inferior ingredients, mm. or you may have uh, an issue in terms of some of those herbs because uh, if you're missing certain ingredients in your body, your microbiome, you've got genetic yep. um, you know, polymorphisms yep. and those sorts of things, that can have an expression slightly yeah. different. But for the most part, look, the proof's in the pudding. If you take it and it works, great. If you yes. But that was the whole idea around proprietary blends is to actually create some IP yeah. around the dosing strategy, how things work. Y you and Matt and, and mm. Elizabeth were doing that all the time it's, in terms of the formulations, right? Yeah. And the only way we could protect that IP was to create proprietary blends. Absolutely. And, and that's a great way to do it. Because but unfortunately now they've been shunned in the marketplace yeah. because people ah, oh, and true, true as well too, because yeah. people were using crap and yeah. or pixie dust or what have you. But, you know, as Matt always says as well too, yeah, but, you know, you might have ingredient A, mm. And you get it from, and there might be 10 ingredient A's out there. Let's call it, you know, um, rhinoblast. I don't know, whatever, right? You got one that's, yeah, mixed with sawdust and yeah. crap and yeah. really low potency and really yeah. terrible. And then you got this pristine, beautiful, mm. perfect one, right? I with mean, high again, extract ratio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you, even on the label, you can still have transparency, but it's not the same. So. I know. And, and then, then you've got to measure its, its outcome or efficacy. Yeah. And um, this is where all these trials come in. But there is one other type of trial that I dislike personally. Yeah. <laughs> there's, 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 there's two types. There's qualitative and quantitative studies. Right. Now, quantitative looks at what all this thing is, numbers and facts and data. And then we've got this other type. And, 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 and I shouldn't say this, but I don't personally don't like it. It's qualitative. Okay. So it's about attitudes and feelings. Oh. And, and Beck, my wife. That's subjective, right? Very subjective. And this is why I don't like it. But it doesn't mean it's bad or anything. It's just that it personally. And, and my wife, Beck, is doing a master's in nursing. And so I had to help her in some of her assignments on research. It was great. But she had to do one on, on, on qualitative, which is all about feelings and attitudes and all this sort of stuff. So there is that. And that's where you interview a few people and get their attitudes mm. to certain things. And it's very, in my opinion, very unscientific, well, but it, it does exist. So just be aware of that yeah, out there. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. You know, yes and no. Yeah. Um, it's true because, I mean, you know, how are you feeling on that? Yeah. You just woke up this morning, had a fight with your husband, mm. you know, nearly got run off the road by, yeah. you know, and you're pissed, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Versus, you know, you could be going through that time of the month, yep. you, you may, the moon may be out, you mm. may be a lunatic, I mm. mean, who knows what's going on, right? Exactly. There's so many things that can, you know, change the way that you feel based yep. on your environment, yep. based on your mood, based on, you know, bloody high tide, I mean, who knows, right? Yeah. So. And that's, 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 that's unfortunately, that, 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 that's quanti that, that, that's quantitative studies. Qualitative. Qual oh, qualitative, sorry, yeah, qualitative studies. So the qualitative studies is, is this other branch where you're doing a lot of interviews, and the problem with that is you only do about... 12 or 20 people it's not a lot and and it's all about attitudes and 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 i know they have to be measured somehow mm. but even depression scales you can use like the hamilton depression scale it comes up with a number and that's much better than I, what i think is is the qualitative stuff so uh quantity is is, is what I, I like to look for but there is that level of evidence that we have to talk about but i don't want to give it too much air time because i'm just not a fan I, i've read these studies and i'm going they all say the same thing yeah everyone thinks you know and this is in in the nursing world everyone's overworked everyone thinks there should be more training and uh, more research is needed they all said the same thing and it's like, how does that help the, the, the life of people? It's all about nursing, you know. And, and, and to me, I, I just don't like that type of study. Um, so, look, there, there are other types of studies that we can quickly run through because I know we're getting a bit short of time. There's case-controlled studies. Right. So let's say I am a doctor and I... And there was a, it was a case-controlled study that was released. It was very good on multiple sclerosis. Right. And this woman... 
um, had a terrible infection. They gave her vancomycin, heaps of antibiotics, which destroyed her gut. Yeah, yeah. vancomycin is a powerful antibiotic. Big, big, that's not big daddy. Yeah, big daddy. She had, um, you know, I, um, I think it was um, clostridia, right. um, which is a very bad infection in hospital. So they wiped out her gut. So what they did was they gave her a fecal transplant from her boyfriend. Okay, and that cleared up her MS. Now that's in one person. And it was it was in a you know it was in a hospital it was in a trial mm -hmm. and her MS dramatically improved. Right. And it's like, what does that show? Well, does that conclusively prove that everyone no. will get no? Because what's in the boyfriend's fecal matter? Yeah, exactly. But it, but it's it, it's one of those studies and, and they're called case controls. It was just one case where they publish it in the literature. Yeah. Because it's fascinating and may it lead is. may lead some other well, research off. So it's not bad. No, it's not because it's I mean again, Steve, if that's the genesis of a new branch of science yep. or understanding. What they should then be doing is okay. Let's look at the boyfriend. What's yep. the boyfriend's microbiome looking yep. like? What's his What's his fecal matter looking like? And they okay. did test it. Did, yeah, and then look at the ratios and yep. potentially look for any anomalies. Yep. Um, but again, then there's her too. I mean, yep. what's her What's her You know, her her gut look like? I mean, I know it's completely wiped mm. out, but then what's her polymorphisms look like? What's exactly. her expressions look like? I mean, you know, you just don't know, no, right? You don't. Know. So I mean, you, the the more variables that you bring in, mm. it, it's like a, the roots of a tree. It could go any which way. It could go any which way, but it, but it stimulates. Um, it, it is published in the literature, so people think it's worthwhile putting out there, mm. and it is. It's just it it's just uh, what they call level three B and system review. You know, is is a one A. So you look down, but it, so it's still there. But it's not like it's not the. B. It doesn't say right. Fecal transplant will cure every MS patient, but it may help some of them. So further research is needed. Mm. So that's that's where those trials can be quite good. Mm. Um, and and expert opinion, you know, again is, is is formed from all these sorts of things, but it is still only an opinion. Mm. So, so when you see someone on television, they say, you know, oh, watch this YouTube video from this guy or girl. They're an expert, and they say this. And I used to get that as a as a lecturer many years ago, and and I'd get sent these videos and I'd say, what do you think of that? I said, okay, contact that person. I'm sure you can, you know, over the internet, and ask them to provide evidence for their statements, whatever whatever, whatever their statement is, and then they can come back with whatever they're they're saying. And it's really interesting. Oh, Tony and I have been sending a few emails out lately asking for evidence based on this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. You're getting crickets. Yeah. And so you, you like, and will. this is the thing. If they don't have the evidence to back it up, yeah. you won't hear anything. But most people don't. No. You know, write to your local members, ask yeah. for the evidence, ask yeah. for information. Yeah. You're not sure about a new policy, procedure. Yep. Yep. Um, they're digging up a hole. You know, you can talk to your local parliament. And in mm. fact, it's, you know, local ministers, local members are really, really important. Exactly. And and there are huge, and, and you've got to remember, this is our, <laughs> our our good level of evidence here. But there are le there are branches of science and medicine that don't really have randomised controlled trials. Like surgery. Surgery. Yeah. So, I mean, that's tricky because, I mean, there, there was one done on, on knee arthroscopes yeah, yeah, where they gave them placebo and that showed no difference. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, um, but they're very difficult to have a placebo surgery, if you can think of that. Yeah, yeah. And a placebo diet. You know, it's very difficult. So there's some things that don't lend themselves to all this sort of stuff. Mm. So, for example, do bowel surgeries work? It's like, probably. And, you know, probably is a good answer. And, you know, it depends on what the surgery is. And, and that's where expert opinion comes back to being the leading level of evidence in that field. Because mm -hmm. you can't say you have randomised controlled trials mm. in that because you can look at case trials, you can look at all sorts of things, and expert opinion is the surgeon saying, yes, you know, Jenny, you need this bowel surgery because in the past, if we haven't operated on you, these people have got sicker and died. Or whatever, and that that's a good expert opinion, and so that's where the level is for that area. It's not bad; it's just the where it is at the moment. So you got to look at that placebo controlled trials. You can't really have placebo exercise, mm. so that won't make you know can't go for a placebo run, as far as I know. Um, there was one trial on placebo broccoli. That's what I mentioned it, where they used hospital broccoli that was void of all the nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old hospital. That, that was the only. Oh. That was the only trial I knew of placebo, and, and so they were still eating broccoli. It was just void of most oh, nutrients. Well, that's it. You know, yeah, green harvested, microwaved. Yeah, yeah. you know, you gr name growing it. in gr growing in uh, you know devoid soil. That's so funny. We've just got so far away from nature knows best, haven't it's, we? It's, it's mean, terrible, isn't it? So, yeah. so, so. These levels of evidence are, are quite useful, 
And you just got to remember that no research is bad. Mm. It's all levels. Mm. You know, the very first time that a drug comes out, it's got to be put in a test tube to see whether it kills a bunch. You don't have to care about ethics or anything. Well, you just well the interesting thing is typically, and, and this is something that's been a long-standing mm. um, you know, uh, process now is that specifically with these sorts of drugs is that they're rigorously tested. Yep. I mean, typically you're looking at five to ten years worth of, of safety mm-hmm. data, mm-hmm. which obviously weeds out any of these things where, you know, <laughs> a, a saying that my father always used to say is mm-hmm. that fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, act in haste, repent at leisure. Yes. And, uh, and it's so true. And yeah. look, we've seen this before as well too, but the, the nice thing, I guess, mm-hmm. about, about um, you know, sort of, a lot of these high impact drugs mm-hmm. is that they do require, they've got very high levels of, um, um, you know, testing, scrutiny yep. and review, yep. which again, even with that, there's still some that slip through. Always. Um, and, and so we've constantly got to be reviewing mm-hmm. and, and, and looking at what is the post, or I, we call it, I call it a post market review, like a what's yep. happened after mm-hmm. it's been out for, you know, 12 months, yep. two years, yep. are, are there any concerns? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what are the, what is the, what is the health community saying, you know, and this is where debate's really important. Mm-hmm. This is where diversity of opinion's really important. Mm-hmm. Also, there's drugs that affect people from the next generation. You know, there's, yeah. there's Agent Orange in that, right? Yeah. I was you know, going to mention any names, but... Yeah. yeah well, I, I think we can. can. I think we? that's been yeah, proven. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so this is the defoliant that was sprayed in Vietnam mm-hmm. um, when they were fighting the Viet Cong. Yeah. The, the, I'm, not, I'm not saying it was just the Americans, but they went over and they sprayed uh, this chemical called Agent Orange, mm-hmm. which you could drink, right? Yeah. So you could actually drink yeah. the stuff, yeah. right? And the, the, they even did that. Uh, my understanding, and I could be wrong, this could, I could be off on this, but my understanding is that when it mixed with the exhaust from the planes, that's when it actually became a... Um, oh. What was the thing that kills your genes, Steve? Um, oh, lots of things. Uh, it, it's called... Um, Effectively, a gene killer. Yeah. So, what would actually happen is that people would get this. Yeah. Some would become sick straight away. Some would, for years. Yep. No, it's not. No, mm. there's none of the. Uh, no, yeah. don't be absurd. No, yeah. there's nothing wrong. It's like asbestos. There's nothing wrong. No, well, smoking does not cause cancer. Exactly. Absolutely, we will shoot you. You yeah. are dead meat. You know, Agent Orange and a few other things like that have, have come out and, and shown to be quite dangerous for people. Very dangerous. I mean, and and as you said, for the next generation, and that's the thing you don't see that straight away no Th- these things can sort of hide lay dormant for a little yep. while hang on there seems to be a higher instance of cancer do you remember the abc building where they had the cluster of cancer and oh, they couldn't yeah. work out what was going on that's there? right you know, this what is here in, here in brisbane yeah uh, we don't know now uh, i'm sure the evidence has, has come out yeah. i was suspecting that there was high levels of radiation yeah. in that building now I, I don't know if that's true or not so, so don't please either. don't quote me no. on that but um, but I there was remember a high it. level. Is it breast cancer? Yeah, it was, and it was a female cancer. cancer yeah, I remember. And I'm pretty sure. And it was just a very, very unusual cluster. Yeah. And see, these are the sorts of things. Mm. It's just like no, it's just a coincidence. Yes. More and more as I get older, the less I believe about coincidences. Right. Well, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's, it's, it's probably something going on there. And. You know, it still could be a mystery to this very day. I mean... Who knows? There could have been something in the water. And co- yeah. co- causation, correlation. And then we've got to keep that's, these two things right. That's really... Okay, everybody started... And, so, you know, it was one coffee maker that they... Who knows? I mean, I'm just pulling yeah. things out. But until you actually, you know, take time to go through the data and actually work things out... And, and just to conclude the story before about correlation and causation, I wasn't the cause of the stones becoming famous. Even though no, I wasn't. Well, correlation causation is 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 really important in science. There's a few principles in science. There's no bad evidence. Correlation doesn't mean causation, and bias is not necessarily bad if it's disclosed. Totally, totally agree. Yeah, oh, I, I agree. Um, yeah. I mean, just just because there is bias, I mean, if if a company is doing a study mm. because they've got a vested interest, yep. but the, it doesn't mean that the product's bad or that the science is bad, and no. and, and that's the thing, right? So. But it does need to be uh, reproduced, and as everyone says in science, and it it always drives me nuts when people say it because it says for everything but more research is needed and research is always ongoing science is like a tree it waves like this and and people say oh you're changing your mind it's like no the science is evolving and changing and improving and that's what it is because the evidence is only going to grow well you can come to the right conclusions for the wrong reasons yes. and that's interesting as well too yeah. so you can maybe observe the outcome and think oh well it's because of this yeah. and how many times even have we done that as well too yep. ahead of the science and we've gone actually no it's worked this way this way yeah. so you know uh, again sometimes it's the the um the the truth or the ability to discover the understanding i mean yep. i know that oftentimes we've created formulations 
simulations and hypotheses that mm-hmm. have proven the outcome was right, but the hypothesis was wrong. Absolutely. But we've actually discovered, oh, no, it was through this mechanism, through mechanism. right? So, yeah, mechanism. You know. It's like the old uh, um, x-rays where they used to treat acne with x-rays. Works. It works. It, it used to clear up the acne, and they just thought it was, um, you know, giving the body an intense radiation, which which helped the skin grow. And you remember back in? Oh, this it was is, just killing uh, off the bacteria, wasn't it? it yeah, yeah. That, but they didn't know that mechanism. They were just giving radiation because they thought radium was a, was a health thing. Yeah, you got to remember. I mean, you know, Madame Curie. This this is not radiation. Was this glowing stuff? And everyone just thought, well, I'm going to put it on my face as makeup because it's glowing, and glowing is good, isn't it? Isn't it? So, so, you know, this is what happened. And so we now, you know, science just changes like that. Smoking, you know, it used to make people feel better. They'd relax a bit more. Oh, well, must be good for you then, you know. And so it's like all the drugs and, you know, the cough medicines where they used to give opium. That's in the 70s. Yeah. It used to suppress cough. In fact, opioids are a treatment for cough these days, but they would give uh, kids tinctures of opium. My father will write a script for Well, now opium. they've got fentanyl, so they don't need opium, Steve. I mean, what's wrong with fentanyl? Nothing no at all. No one's ever died from fentanyl. No, no. It's, it's not an epidemic. Yeah. It's just horrendous. Like, anyway. I think the largest fine in, in medicine's history, and please correct me wrong, was... Uh, one of the companies, I can't remember the name of the company, is J&J Johnson Johnson, and I could be wrong, that, that showed that one of the opioids they, they said was not addictive, and it turned out to be very addictive, um, and um, I think it was oxycodone, I think. And, and, so, and they did studies showing that after a few weeks of taking the drug, you could go off it without too many side effects. Yeah. So they said, well, it's not addictive. So doctors went, well, it's not addictive. I'm going to give, um, you know, for... Brooko for a severely painful endometriosis for months on end, and it's totally fine. You know, this is what this is what, what people think. I'm just if, you, if if you're a physician in 1991 and you've been told a paper that's not addictive, and, you, and you your poor it. old patients are in this pain, yeah, and this relieves them. the pain, you give it to them for months, years, whatever. But I think in terms of, um, but there's 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 good companies out there doing good research yeah. and studies. But like everything, question everything. everything. Just don't accept anything at face value. Dig into it. And if you're being told don't look over here, look over there. Oh yeah. And I mean, that's one of my most favorite things it's, it's really incredible and the critical and thinking the ability to actually stand out don't be a sheep don't be oh i heard it on the news so therefore no yeah. in fact if you're watching the news get off it the the truth is is and it doesn't mean the truth is on any other platform too there's a lot of straw man arguments and mm. horse crap out there as well too and the thing is is that the whole world is a stage at the moment yeah. but trying to actually decipher the truth this is where critical thinking understand the motive What's behind mm-hmm. it? Why are people saying this? Is it true? Yep. I mean, again, Steve, we always say question everything. everything. Look into everything. Don't who, just accept things on face value. Exactly, because who decides what goes in the news? It's somebody. Yeah. And therefore, it's an opinion. Well, at the end of the day, it's your life. Yep. It's your body. It's your choice. Yep, so. absolutely. Anyway. Totally agree. I think we're out of time, Steve. We are. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, thanks for that one. Absolutely. Good fun. And we'll be back next week. See you Please. next week, guys. Well, bye. Bye.